I've been the programme manager for Croydon Family Power for the last three years and believe you me, I've been immersed in it. <laughs> um, it's, it's a big lottery funded programme and it had four elements to it. It was about early intervention but different approaches to how we would make early intervention have more impact in Croydon. Working with families that had multiple and complex needs and bringing the community uh, involvement into it as well. So we're going to talk about um, the four elements. We had ABCD, which is our asset-based community development. Cormac's going to be talking to you about that later on. And we had the family navigators, which was going to be a one-to-one -one support service to families that were just about coping, but might be, you know, finding themselves under pressure. Uh, we had Parent Pod, which is a human givens uh, model of parenting, which is more like personal development training, helping you to learn about yourself so you can be a better parent. And then we had Roots of Empathy. Roots of Empathy is a Canadian model um, of early intervention that hopes to reduce violence and aggression in um, young children and develop empathy. There's lots of information about all our partners' um, services on the table over there, so I would encourage you later on, have a good look and pick up. You know, there's lots of um, good connections to be made today. I'm Janine Bailey, and as Aisha said, I've been working as a community builder for over three years now for Croydon for Voluntary Action, and I've had the pleasure of supporting the Croydon Family Power Project. So I'd first like to welcome our first speaker, George Hoskins, to talk about um, his work with the Family Power Programme and the importance of early intervention. First I'd like to congratulate everyone who's had any part in the Family Power Project. We've been involved in numerous partnerships around the country and this is one that has really impressed us with the things that have been achieved by it. Uh, you've been groundbreaking in, for example, being one of the very first places, uh, in fact the very first, along with Lewisham in the whole of England, to bring the Roots of Empathy program into England. And that's a program which has had success in many different countries around the world and has a huge potential to transform the lives of children. The Family Navigators project has been uh, a very successful one that's helped the lives of many people in, in uh, the target area that you've been working in in Croydon. Uh, we've been incredibly impressed, uh, and not just impress, in, impressed, but completely won over by the ABCD methodology which Paul has uh, uh, put into effect with such great impact and which has uh, really won Croydon Council round to support it to the point where they wanted to extend it much more widely across Croydon and we in way very much want to work with Cormac in many other parts of the United Kingdom developing ABCD and everything I've heard about ABCD and I've also heard about it from Gloucestershire, I've heard about it from a big lottery who've used it in Scotland for example, everything I've heard about it has been absolutely superb. Um, so uh, it's been a very very successful program I think everybody who's been part of it <coughs> should be congratulated. You know, if you think about asset-based community development in the most straightforward of terms, all it's about is recognizing that enduring change happens from inside out. There's no way that an outside agency can come in and tell anybody what they should do. In fact, I think rightly, Elizabeth Moss Cantor, who I know you got a connection with would say that if you do change to people, families and individuals, they experience it as violence, even if that change is well-intentioned. Isn't that remarkable? But if people do change themselves, even if it isn't perfect, they experience it as liberation. So that's what's common across all of the different elements of the Family Power Programme. It happens from inside out. 
They have different names. Sometimes it's called ABCD, sometimes it's called Roots of Empathy, Early Intervention, whatever it might be. But the grounding principle is that we are sufficient. We may have challenges, there may be issues that we have to deal with, but in our very being, as families, as individuals, and as communities, we have what we need if we can connect what we have. Well, at first we hope that in, within our school, everyone comes together more and they work together, as well as working together with the primary school. Also, it will give commu com the community, local residents, our school and Kensington Abbey <coughs> Primary School a sense of identity of the community they live in. And it will also, like, promote community cohesion between the groups. So we've also been here talking to local business owners, including the owner of Kensington Autos. Um, he said that for about 20 years he's been waiting for this area to be cleaned up and that it's fantastic to see local people doing it and it's going to really benefit his business as well as the local area and he's really happy about it. As Aisha said, I've been fortunate enough to, with Janine, be the community builder on uh, the ABCD initiative and community builders, as uh, you'll hear, are uh, very much part of the methodology about asset-based community development are about engaging with people we call connectors, community connectors, family connectors. And these are the people who are the experts in their area. They're trusted, they're connected, they have a passion for their area um, and a passion for, as, as Cormac said, actually being supporting the development and the lead of community-driven activity, a recognition that there's things that uniquely only we can do within our, within our communities. So the asset-based community development initiative very much going to show you some examples, two examples. We have connectors who are here in the room with them, fantastic. Well, they're the people who've really led on this, uh, and it's a joy to work with them. We'll just give you a real sense of, of, of the process that we've taken, and Janine will lead on that through the video we've got to show, and then some of the examples, as I said, that have been developed. And for me, as a community builder, again, not only working in those areas that are consistently seen uh, in a negative light, turning it round and actually saying we do have the solutions, we do have the assets in this area, and also being a citizen within Thornton Heath, so an area where consistently you hear negativity, to actually be able to show that back and show those stories of connections, of people sharing the gifts that really move things forward. The big part of Cook and Taste is engaging people from the BME community, and we see that a lot of the things that happen in the, in the BME community in terms of health uh, there is a huge um, incidence of high blood pressure, diabetes, and we have a lot of coronary heart disease. So Cook and Taste is a way of actually educating people, empowering people about food choices, making better food choices. So, um, in 10 weeks alone, our connectors have had 752 conversations in those venues. A hundred people have been signposted to community projects and 25 families that need a bit more support have been signposted to a, a, specialist, a, a specialist family navigator just in 10 weeks. So we see that this is taking the strengths of the program, letting them work um, supportively together and we are reaching more and more people. So um, you can see this is the way forward uh, that we're going to take the additional funding if we're <laughs> successful in achieving it because we can actually um, work with much more people um, effectively. The next steps are we're waiting next week to hear if we will get this additional funding for a further year's work and um, we will build on the strengths of the ABCD work and the family navigators work in the future. I'd like to take this opportunity now to actually give thanks. I want to give thanks to the staff team, Paul, stand up please, Janine. Talisha, where are you? She's not here. Um, I'd like the navigators to stand up, please. Any navigators in the room, please stand up. 